We're back with a video concerning the concavity test. So we've seen three uh, or more videos so far involving the first derivative test, and that tells us about when a function is increasing or decreasing, when a function has a relative max or a relative min. And so immediately the mind probably thinks, okay, can we go to the second derivative as well? Because remember the second derivative, if we look at when that second derivative is positive or negative, it tells us about concavity. Um, so can we do the same thing with the second derivative uh, that we did with the first derivative? And yes, we can. So then the next question is, well, can we call it the second derivative test? And no, actually, it's called the concavity test. Um, the second derivative test is something else, which uh, the following video will talk about. But um, the concavity test basically does to the second derivative what the first derivative test does to the first derivative. The idea being is that we're going to get the second derivative, we're going to set that second derivative equal to zero, or find out when that second derivative does not exist, and then we're going to make our sign chart and we're going to check out plus minus and um, anything that's positive, well positive second derivative results in something being concave up and negative second derivative results in something being concave down and if the sign changes then that would be a point of inflection. So we're going to basically do the same thing that we did with the first derivative only with the second derivative and um, it's going to help us out as we're trying to determine more information about these functions. So uh, we're going to go to a, uh, an example that I actually used uh, in the past. We've got x e to the x, um, and we want to find out when this function is concave up, and also when, if at all, does this function have a point of inflection. Now in a previous video, uh, we started with f of x being equal to x e to the x, and we found that the first derivative was going to be e to the x times 1 plus x, okay? I think I did that in one of the first derivative test videos. So you can refer to that if you want to see how we get that derivative to save time. It's going to go right to that point because ultimately this is the concavity test. We're interested in concavity and inflection points, which means we need the second derivative. So we now need to derive this first derivative to get our second derivative. So let's go ahead and do that. We need f double prime of x, all right? And we see here we have a product. We have e to the x times the quantity 1 plus x. Product means we have to do a product rule. So let's go ahead and do that. We have to do the derivative of the first and the derivative of e to the x is obviously e to the x, so we're going to write that down, and then we're going to keep the second untouched, so there's our 1 plus x. Now we alternate, so now plus, now we're going to keep the e to the x, and we're going to take the derivative of x plus 1. Ooh, that's tough. Alright, derivative of x plus 1 would be 1. Okay, so there's our second derivative, and uh, we're charged with finding out when this is equal to 0 or does not exist. Well, we got polynomial 1 plus x, we got the term 1, we got e to the x, which is always continuous. This second derivative will always be continuous. There's no uh, ability to divide by 0, there's no negatives under a square root or anything like that, there's no vertical asymptotes. So we're going to have to worry about the does not exist part, but we do have to figure out the equals 0 part. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we see we have two terms here. We have the term prior to the plus, and we have the term after the plus. And again, just like in previous videos, we're looking to factor. So what can we factor out? What do these two terms have in common? Well, they definitely have that e to the x in common. So let's factor that out. So we've got e to the x, and then if we look at the first term, divide that by e to the x, and we're left with just 1 plus x. And we have our plus sign, and then we have e to the x times 1 divided by e to the x. Well, that just leaves us with 1. So by factoring out the e to the x, we have that remaining polynomial and 1 plus x plus 1 we all know better as x plus 2. So we have e to the x times x plus 2. That's our second derivative. It's a nice simplified form and we're interested when that's equal to 0. And once again when does e to the x equal 0? Exactly. Never. So there's no possibility of this first part being equal to 0. However there's a value of x which will make that equal to 0 we know that would be negative 2. So x equals negative 2 is when the second derivative is equal to 0. Now you've heard me use this term before. This value right here, negative 2, is a possible point of inflection. Okay, just it's to the second derivative what a critical point is to the first derivative. Okay, it's not guaranteed to be a point of inflection until we verify that the second derivative changes sign at this value of x. Okay, so right now it's just a possible point of inflection. Let's toss that on the number line. All right, so we've got negative 2. We've got to pick values to the left and to the right of that. So how about negative 3 and 0? Those two test values should hopefully work. You can pick whatever test values you want as long as they are in the appropriate interval. 
We're going to take this value, this test value, and it's the concavity test. Concavity is connected to the second derivative. So we're going to be plugging this value and this value into the second derivative, not into the first derivative, like we did for the first derivative test, and not into the original function. It must go into the second derivative. And just like before, you can plug these values into any version of the second derivative, although I would recommend the, uh, the most simplified version right here. It's going to make your life as easy as possible. Okay, so we're going to plug negative 3 in for x. We know that e, once again, is always positive, so we have a plus here, because that's always going to be positive. And negative 3 plus 2, that's negative 1, that's a negative value. A positive times a negative produces a negative result. And again, that would have happened whether you chose negative 3, negative 8, or negative 38. It's all going to give you a negative result. However, we plug in 0. Now, e to the 0, again, always positive. e to the 0 is obviously 1. And then we have 0 plus 2. That is positive as well. Positive times a positive is a positive. So what do we have here? We have the idea that the function will be, con you know, I'm going to say the function, I'm talking about f. Now, okay, we used f double prime to help us learn more about f. f is concave down prior to negative 2 because the second derivative is negative. f is concave up after x equals negative 2 because the second derivative is positive. And f has a point of inflection at x equals negative 2 because the second derivative changed sign. Okay, so we can take that information from this sign chart here and we can move over to our answer. But again, basically what we know is that our function is concave down in some method or manner um, right there, and the function is concave up in some manner right there. Okay, so when is g, let me switch back to orange, when is g concave up? We would say from um, negative 2 to infinity uh, because g double prime is positive. Okay, and for concavity reasons, um, it is extremely important, and again, I want you to always get in the habit of using open intervals, but concavity, only open intervals are allowed. You cannot do closed intervals, so it has to be parentheses right here, or it has to say x greater than negative 2. You cannot use, uh, you cannot use brackets, or, uh, yeah, and, and these spots right here. All right, uh, but the second derivative is positive, that's our reason. Okay. When does g have a point of inflection? It has a point of inflection to x equals negative 2 equals negative 2 because g double prime changes sign. Okay, change from being negative to positive, g double prime changes sign, then the original function has a point of inflection. So this is the concavity test, and again, the concavity test is to the second derivative, what the first derivative test is to the first derivative. In the next video, we'll talk about the second derivative test.